Hi everybody, I'm Howard and this is Otter's Corner. And today's topic, as you can see by the thumbnail, is talking about uh, Joe Biden's alleged, supposed promise to increase Social Security benefits by $200 a month for all beneficiaries. And the reason I'm broaching this topic today is, again, like other topics, I'm seeing it a lot on YouTube where other YouTubers will talk about this with misinformation, of course, and people will comment. And a, a comment I often see is, gee, Joe Biden lied to us already. He's, he's not going to give us $200. He's not going to increase Social Security. He doesn't care about senior citizens. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll approach this a little bit. And we'll talk about several other questions that are similar to that on uh, topics I often see relate, kind of related to this. So the first question is, did Joe Biden promise he was going to raise Social Security by $200 a month? And, and the, the, the quickest, easiest answer for me is no. I, I've never seen any evidence of that. I've never seen a quote attributed to him where he promised to raise Social Security benefits. Uh, I have seen several quotes where he supported bills from congressmen mostly who were proposing to raise Social Security by $200 a month. The, the most famous one, Bernie Sanders. There have been a couple others. Um, he, he's, he's fully supported those. But understand, and if you know how bills get approved and passed, and certainly Joe Biden does, he has no power to do anything in regards to Social Security. He can't just wave a wand or sign an executive order, hey, $200 a month extra for everybody, come and get it, $300, for, you know, whatever it is you want, here it is, vote for me. He can't do that. He knows that. Most people know that. Certainly all politicians know that. So if, if, if you were fooled into voting for him in the last election in 2020 because you thought he was going to give you more money in Social Security, shame on you. You, you just don't know how it works. Um, understand this. If your only concern is getting more money in Social Security, if you're on the program now or you're coming up to the program and you, you think it needs more money, you're not going to vote for Republicans. You're going to vote for Democrats. Either way, though, unless the Democrats get control of the House, get a 60 uh, seat uh, control in the uh, Senate and continue to hold the White House, you're not going to see an increase to Social Security. Republicans simply will not support that. If you're a one-topic voter, if this is the only thing that drives your vote, vote Democratic. Obviously, there's a hundred other topics, there's a hundred other issues, there's a hundred other things you need to look at when you decide who to vote for. Consider them all. But again, if it's Social Security, Biden did not promise you anything. Biden can't deliver anything. Republicans will never support it. It's not going to happen. So let's go look at some other questions. Uh, and this is a comment I see often. Biden hates Social Security. He hates seniors. He cast the deciding vote in 1983 in the Senate to have Social Security benefits taxed on up to 50% of the benefit. Well, the truth is he did vote. He did vote yes to pass that bill, but he was just one vote within 88 yay votes in the Senate. That bill had widespread support, bipartisan support, from both Republicans and Democrats. So he voted his one vote among 88 votes to pass that. How is he the deciding vote? You know, I, I can see if there's a 50-50 vote and they have to turn it over to the vice president and he has to vote or she at whatever time we're talking about in the future. Um, that's a deciding vote. You can say that. But again, 88 votes. He had one vote. He didn't cast a deciding vote, but he did vote for it. He did want to see that bill passed, and it was passed. So has Biden supported cutting Social Security in the past? And maybe this is something he'll do in the future? Yeah, yeah. He, he's He's... You know, there weren't bills to do that, but he's voiced his support to freeze Social Security, uh, which in essence is a, a cut in benefits. Uh, you know, he, he, he was one of those silly politicians who somehow tied Social Security to deficits and debt. And by freezing Social Security benefits, it was going to help the deficit and the debt. 
you know, we, we've talked about that before, has nothing to do with the deficit, it's fully funded by employers and employees, government does not contribute one cent, it does not contribute, Social Security does not contribute one cent to deficit or debt. So yes, he supported cutting benefits in the past, he's talked about increasing benefits now or supporting increasing benefits now, political wins, make of it what you will, but those are just the facts. And then, you know, this, this, this isn't an entirely retirement-related topic, but I want to talk about it a little bit because it's related, and I'll, I'll try to stay away from things that aren't, you know, that ignore retirement. Um, you know, does Biden care more about foreign countries than U.S. senior citizens? You know, we're talking about aid to Ukraine, which he is fully supportive of, and, and, and aid to Israel, which he's trying to get passed. And, you know, the comment you hear is, why are we giving money to other countries if we're not going to support senior citizens? Again, this goes back to the money being used for foreign aid has nothing to do with Social Security. We're running a deficit now. The government's running a deficit. If they want to give aid to foreign countries, the only way they can do that is by the Treasury selling Treasury bills, bonds, and notes, bringing in money, and we use that money to aid foreign countries. That money, by selling treasuries, when it comes in, cannot be used for Social Security because it is illegal for the government to contribute to Social Security. So does giving aid to Ukraine mean starving out Social Security recipients? No. One has nothing to do with the other. So, you know, then the broader question becomes, you know, why won't the government help its own citizens instead of foreign countries. And I see this comment all the time. Nothing for U.S. citizens, everything for Ukraine. Gee, if you live in Ukraine, Biden's going to help you, but he's not going to help you here. Well, again, remember, any foreign aid gets passed by Congress. The money used for weapons and aid for Ukraine was passed by Congress and the Senate. It had Republican support and Democrat support. Not everybody. But there was, was support on both sides of the aisle. It's not, you know, Joe Biden opening up his wallet and sending money out to other countries. He can't do that. Congress does that. Congress passes the bill. Senate passes the bill. The president then signs or vetoes the bill. In this case, he's supportive of those foreign aids. They get passed. He signs them. So can this money be used for other things? Well, again... Treasury sells bills and bonds, that money comes in, goes to pay that. But, you know, those are, you know, there, there's, two, there's two ways the government gets revenue, through selling those treasuries or income tax revenue. Now, certainly that's one big pile of money, it's in the general fund. They could just as easily say, instead of giving $100 billion to Ukraine, let's bring in $100 billion and increase any one of a number of programs. And this, again, is, is an answer to the people who say, never any help for U.S. citizens. Well, we have Medicaid, which is help for U.S. citizens. We have several welfare programs, which is help for U.S. citizens. Food stamps, the Veterans Administration, uh, child tax credits, uh, higher standard deductions for seniors on their income tax returns, and SSI, Supplemental Security Income. Now, instead of raising $100 billion for Ukraine, could we help any of those programs? Yeah, we could. We could. If Congress could agree to it and say, hey, let's give out more money to the, the people who need help here. Let's, let's start some program to help the homeless. Let's build homes for the homeless or any of these programs. Yeah, we can do that. Why isn't it done? Well, you know, it's politics. Um, Certain, certain politicians don't want to do that. They don't want a nanny state. They don't believe the government needs to take care of its citizens to that extent. You know, so now you know, we, we get into ideological issues. You know, is, there, is the government responsible for senior citizens? I read so many comments and I see so many statistics on senior citizens being below the poverty line or you know, subsisting on Social Security benefits only. Is that right or fair? That, you know, that's not the question here. Um, should they have saved for, social, for retirement? Yeah. Did they? No. You know, so they're poor, they're needy, they're, you know, they're hungry. 
<laughs> They're cold in some cases. Is it the government's responsibility to take care of people? You know, I hear the comment, hey, let, let Congress try to live on $1,200 a month Social Security. Well, you know, the Social Security program wasn't designed for you to live on entirely, you know, based upon that, but people do. So I can't answer the question of whether government is responsible for people. That's ideological. It's, you know, is it a nanny state? Is it socialism? I do believe we should help people where and when we can. I don't like to see people dying because they can't get medical help, because they can't get enough food, because they can't get shelter. Personally, don't, it doesn't necessarily label me a, you know, a far left liberal or a socialist to say we should help people. But you know, I just gave you examples, a lot of programs and most people, conservatives included, would hate to see these programs go away, including social security. So the, the point is, understand the topic, understand why things are the way they are, educate yourself, vote intelligently. Don't vote against your own interests. Understand who supports what and why and make a good decision. So again, subscribe and like if you can. I'd, I'd really greatly appreciate it and so would Otter. And we'll see you next time. Bye.